everyone. I'm here today to do my wrap up for the month of August and I read a lot of books in the month of August partly because of Booker and partly because audiobooks. Um, so I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go through all of them in detail in this video because then it will be really really long. Uh, but let me tell you that I read for the Booker Prize, I read Trust by Hernan Diaz, which I hated. Um, because I was completely bored. Uh, Glory by Novela at Bulawayo, which uh, there were aspects of it that I liked, but I think that as a book it also has a lot of elements that don't really work. Um, Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer, which I thought it was just not... It was trying to do something that it was not actually doing. Um, the Trees by Percival Everett, which was... Um, it's kind of a mystery um, about um, racial murders in the South and I thought it was kind of predictable and not that deep. Um, Trickle Walker by Alan Garner, which is a wild ride, but I enjoyed the ride. Um, Case Study by Grammy Macro Barnett, uh, which was um, unsettling but also boring. And After Sappho by Selby Winswartz, which is trying to red tell, red -tell uh, the lives of uh, famous um, women, um, mostly lesbians, in the 1920th century. Um, and I just found it very um, unapproachable. And I also read The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida by Shahan Karunatilaka, which is a um, set in Sri Lanka and it deals with a lot of uh, cultural but also political um, events in Sri Lanka and I think um, it was very well done. So yeah, if you want to know more of my thoughts on any of these books, uh, I have reviews for all of them, so I will link all of them down below. Um, but yeah, those were the ones that I read for the booker. Then the other big project that I read for in this month was my Read Around the World project. So I'm trying to tackle a, a section of the world in every, every month. And this month I focused on the southern part of the Caribbean. Um, so I read three books for that and the video for that will be linked down below. I've read books from each of the countries in, in that area in that video but this month in particular I read three of them and that was The House of Six Swords by Patricia Salbert which is kind of a autofiction about the author moving from Curaçao to the US and how she misses Curaçao and her grandma. Um, then Only God Can Make a Tree by Bertram Roach, which I read from St. Kitts and Nevis. And um, this was kind of a love triangle situation in which the man is horrible and it's like basically playing with these two girls. Um, and we see how that pans out for him. And there is also a lot of racial elements to it. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more, you can go to the video uh, about the Read Around the World project challenge. Um, and then the last one I read was Printer Binder by Jacob Ross, which was for Granada. And this is about a, a boy with some disabilities and his family life and how he's treated different from everyone else. Um, I found it kind of really, really slow <laughs> and kind of boring. Um, but yeah, again, more thoughts on that other video. Um, so those are like the books that I read for specific projects for this month. Um, then I also read a lot of audiobooks. Um, so I read This One Sky Day by Leon Ross, which was part of the um, long list of the Women's Prize this year. And I had heard good things about it. It's a fantasy book um, about this world in which uh, something happens and they're trying to solve it. In, and it has a lot of uh, feminist tones to, to it that that event. Um, it's... Uh, I, I haven't heard anyone else say this, but I, it's very erotic. It's very um, sexual, very sp explicit and um, not necessarily just like um, in ways of the sex scenes are very explicit, but like there is this tone of sex throughout the book um, in which some like in some 
specific place that you didn't expect someone will say like oh look at that woman I remember her vagina kind of thing <laughs> which is very weird to me um, and, but, so that element I didn't really like uh, like the magic system if you want to say it like that the um, it does have to, a lot to do with vaginas and penises and it just was weird to me um, but I did also like the fact that um, the like there is this concept in which every single person has a special meal just for them just for them and that meal brings the best in in them um, so the cooks in that society have a lot of sort of power and a lot of recognition and I like that part I like the food part I just didn't like the sex part so much um, and I think that the mystery and the plot it just it was not engaging for me so a disappointment because I was really excited about this book but it was a bit of a disappointment another one that I read from the woman's long list uh, from this year is Creatures of Passage by Morowe Jejide and I think this one was the favorite to win from a lot of people even though it didn't make to the shortlist and I can see why um, it's about a woman that is uh, sort of she, she drives a car like a taxi I guess you could say between our world and the um, the beyond so like when you die uh, she carries people souls to the next step um, and I mean obviously she can also talk with the dead kind of um, and there is a lot of it, it's magical realism so there is a lot of back and forth between the underworld or whatever you want to call it and the real world um, I thought that the characters were very well done I think that they were flawed but also endearing and there was like they were very well developed and I also like the like the setup of the whole um, taxi thing and this magical realism thing but the plot itself I think it was just um, not that interesting to me so yeah I liked some elements of it but I didn't love it then I read other two non-fiction in audio the first one was Islands of Abandonment by Carl Flynn um, and this one was very interesting this one looked at areas that have been left alone and what happens when nature does in, in them so sort of like the area around Chernobyl or the no man's land between two countries that that kind of thing and what happens to the nature there it also talks about um, what is considered natural um, so when we do something in nature um, do we consider natural what was before we arrived or what happens after uh, we arrive? And an example that uh, the book gave was we have introduced species of animals to places where they were not before um, and those animals have thrived there's big populations of them and some of them have been there for maybe a hundred years or something or several hundred years um, and at what point do we consider those animals natural in that environment and when they they stop being invasive species and things like that also like if we have cut a, a forest in a certain place and then that area becomes something else and not a forest anymore when we leave it alone is that natural or should we actively try to make it a forest again kinds of that kind of thing and i thought that that was very interesting i also learned a lot about random places in the world in which um, for very different reasons have been left alone there was also this forest in France that was left alone because in the second world war it was or the first world war I don't remember in one of the worlds uh, they uh, they planted a lot of mines in it so it's very dangerous to walk around it so nature has taken over um, so a lot of things like that which yeah I found really interesting and I recommend this book and then the last one is A Ghost in the Throat by Dorian Nigrofa something like that it's Irish so probably a butcher that uh, but yeah A Ghost in the Throat um, so this was 
kind of a little bit all over the place. Um, it's kind of the memoir of the author uh, regarding of being a mother, uh, but also this, um, she has kind of an obsession with this poet and she has written books about the poet and it kind of, it's all over her life basically. And it kind of puts these two things together, also like Irish, um, Irish culture um, and some of the elements by themselves were interesting but the way that they were combined just didn't make any sense to me. Also I was hoping to really connect to the motherhood side of this book but I, th I found it very very over dramatic and very like emotion over the top emotional uh, which is not my style of motherhood so I didn't connect with it particularly in that sense either um, so yeah overall I, it was a bit of a disappointment and then for books that were not any of these things uh, I read um, How Beautiful We Were by Imbulan Bue uh, which was um, it's I think it's in the final of the book to price but I, I had heard about it much before and I wanted to read it much before that um, and it's basically about this town it doesn't say exactly where but the author is Cameroonian so I will assume it's Cameroon um, so this village basically that has been destroyed because an American company has made a pipe uh, transporting oil through the, the place so the water is contaminated and all of the children um, are being sick many of them are dying and the the town kind of wants to do something about it, wants to rebel and they are trying different things, they are trying to con to talk to the company and thinking that if they talk to them they will realize that it is not acceptable and they will stop doing it um, but other people know that that's not the case and it's kind of this fight with this company um, and it's told in a very interesting way so it's alternating sections between a chorus of voices that is the children of the village which throughout the book they grow up so they start being children and then they they are adults with their own children um, and then the other sections are from the point of view of a, a certain member of this family that is very very embedded in the in the fight so they are kind of the leaders of the fight um, so we see the different people uh, of of the fight um, of this this family, and I mean because many of them kind of disappear or died in the process because of how this company treats people. I think it it did a very good job of taking different points of view without being very complicated to follow. I think it was quite easy to follow but it did give an extra level of depth um, and yeah I, I think it was a really book, good book. I think it was very interesting, the topics were interesting, I think the characters were well developed and I mean the plot was kind of predictable because we know how this kind of thing was but still it was I don't think it was a point so yeah I really enjoyed this one and then the next one I read was The Fisherman King by Katrina Maud Daud uh, and this is a fantasy book it's a quite a short one which is unlike many fantasy books um, and it's about this man that wants to um, find this treasure because he his family was uh, royalty in this kingdom which is based on Brunei, it's based on Brunei and folklore um, and so this man wants to find this treasure so that he can become the king and the thing is that they have a special ability to talk to, um, to snakes I think it was um, so they are the only ones that can find this treasure um, and like the fact that if he finds it then it will prove that he's part of royalty um, and I found the, the plot kind of simple but still engaging I have to say though that the role of women in this book is not great uh, it's very um, not sexist or misogynistic like it doesn't intentionally put women down but the women have a very small role of being 
the partners and the child bearers um, so it's not great on that side of things um, but yeah the story was okay um, so yeah it, it was okay overall and then the last one I read was A Bigger Picture by Vanessa Nakate and Vanessa Nakate is a climate activist from Uganda so she's on the same kind of realm of things as Greta Thunberg um, and she in this book I really appreciated uh, the approach she took so she started with how she started learning about activism about climate change and how she decided to do something about it and she started very small and tried to be very positive about it there is a whole positive um, tone to this book even though the topic is not very positive but um, yeah she tried to be uh, not offend anybody and try to be um, trying to find out how to be an activist in Uganda uh, because there are extra challenges to be an activist there and then we see her trying we see her growing in her confidence and being more bold about her activist um, activities and trying to gather more attention to them um, and then once she was known she was also invited to um, United Nations uh, forums and things like that and met other activists and we see her growing as an activist internationally as well uh, but also the challenges that she faces as a black African activist in those circles like she's not she's trying to be a race even though her voice should be stronger than the rest because her families and her community are suffering the consequences of climate change more than the rest of the world at the moment and she, she talks a lot about the intersectionality of being an activist while still being racially um, discriminated against um, and I thought that that was really powerful and um, yeah I overall really enjoyed this book I think the writing was simple but she's not a writer she's not a journalist she's an activist so she doesn't need to write overly nice sentence I think I don't think that's the point of the book and I think that the message came across really well and I researched a lot of the things that she said um, to see exactly what happened and what was uh, the issues that she was facing um, so that probably is something that shows how how interested in the book I was um, so yeah those are the books that I read this month uh, let me know if you have read any of them if you are interested in any of them and on the next video bye